So um, I'm on the board of directors for an organization called publicwatchdogs.org. And Public Watchdogs was founded on the premise that the people have the right to know what's going on with their government and their environment. What we're doing is exposing corruption in government that has an impact on the environment. And uh, there's a lot of that going on. And we're kind of short on the funds that we need to accomplish it and the people that we need to fully investigate all of the things that we know are going on. What we're doing right now is we're taking on the biggest issue that we feel is most important for the country and focusing on that one issue in public while we continue to advance on other issues that we also see are important. But uh, publicwatchdogs.org needs your support and your help, just like John's organization, helpa.org, needs your support and deserves your support. The Pinwheel is an organization where the, the head of it is a C-level executive, like a CEO or a CFO of one of these uh, oil transportation companies. And, um, and so quarterly, the, the director of the Pinwheel would change and whenever pipeline operators would discover uh, a surface expression of a petroleum product that wasn't their own from their own pipeline, they call into the pinwheel and whoever's in charge of the pinwheel that quarter takes whatever actions are necessary to identify whose uh, oil line might be leaking and give them a heads up. And then they go out there and rather than following state and federal laws that say you've got to report the spill and if you've got to do a proper cleanup and everything, they just go out and they, they fix the pipeline in the middle of the night and they just leave the contamination in place. And so I learned about this and I brought that to the attention of the oil company that I was working for for that service station and the very next day our project got pulled from us because uh, somebody didn't want us knowing about the pinwheel. Wow. So I, I love you man. You're, you're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're the I'm the hands-on guy and you seem to be the very smart intelligent scientist guy that we we need to team up. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've got over 200 case studies that I've worked on over the last 25, 27 years. So I, I just shared a few of them with you. I've got so many more. I wish you would have blown the whistle because then they would be calling you the whistleblower. <laughs> yeah, that's okay with you being the whistleblower. Well, I don't mind that. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, what can I do better? What can you do better? Um, I don't know. What I'd like to see you do, I'd like to see uh, analytical laboratories team up with you and and uh, consulting, f uh, people with consulting experience like me, consulting scientists team up with you. And when you see stuff, I want to get samples, I want to analyze it, I want to see the hard data too. I'm a scientist, I like to see the hard data. I don't doubt, I mean, the videos that you show, when you see oil sheen coming up, when you disturb what's buried underwater, it's obvious it's oil sheen. When you show oil on your gloves, it's obvious that it's oil. But to have the laboratory data too, that shows what the constituents are, you know, you can fingerprint where these oils come from by what chemicals are present and what chemicals are absent in the concentrations of them. That's something that I would do a lot in the cases I'd work on. We could fingerprint specifically if there were leaks from multiple gas stations, uh, different uh, service stations brands have different trademark uh, chemical constituents in those gasolines and we could pinpoint whose gasolines they were from fingerprinting analysis. Well you have that situation with fracking now. I mean, fracking is a mile away and it's poisoning your water. Yeah, yeah, fracking. Uh, fracking was such a valuable business to the oil industry in the United States. It created like an oil boom over the last 10, 15 years because they pulled all the environmental regulations and just said, go frack away. And uh, so many wa drinking water aquifers got permanently contaminated from this. I worked on uh, as a consultant for oil field investments out in Texas and all in these oil fields the way that they managed it uh, they didn't manage it the way we do here in California or the way we're supposed to by law they were just 
blasting through these uh, freshwater uh, aquifers and all the aquifers got contaminated and then they're just tapping into all that water and using it to fill up the fracking pools and they're just freely fracking. The, the goal is to get the wells in as quick as possible and so many, I observed so many environmental practices and environmental laws being violated out there, but the, the goal was to get all the wells in, and then you have this big package of wells that you can sell as a package to a big oil company, and then the big oil company, it's on them to, you know, dial things in, but there's so much contamination that occurred out there. These these areas were just devastated by the big oil boom, and, and I was only seeing the pieces that my, you know, uh, that the companies I do consulting work for were putting me on. I didn't even get out to the Midwest where, where you are. Right. Um, so what can we do in the future to protect our water? You know, we're getting to the point where we've got so few water resources left that are free from contamination that you know, just in my lifetime, I've seen it where I could turn on the tap and get fresh drinking water that didn't have chemical contaminants to now everywhere I go to, there's chemical contaminants that are on the short list that is required by the EPA to be reported. But then there's thousands of other chemical contaminants that aren't even required to be reported in our drinking water supply. There's things like DEET in Chicago because, uh, you know, the Sh Chicago's water supply comes out. Out of Lake Michigan and everybody sprays DEET on them to prevent from getting mosquito bites and that stuff washes off and the mist is in the air and it's the Lake Michigan's contaminated with it and then it gets into the water supply and a lot of chemicals don't come out through filtration you know there's a lot of you can there's so many different water treatment processes that are available but then there's chemical chemical contaminants that make it through all those different processes and so uh, yeah, I, I see most of our drinking water now is contaminated. And uh, I, I see uh, water suppliers, they'll have one well that has hexavalent chromium in it and the rest of them don't. And uh, they, rather than not use the well that's contaminated be above the EPA levels with hexavalent chromium, they'll uh, dilute and they send all their customers a smaller amount of hexavalent chromium, which in my opinion is criminal. not safe at any concentration. That should be criminal. Yeah. I mean, they, they know that it's poisonous. Yeah. And it's so, so they dilute the poison into everybody's water instead of uh, having a shortfall of water. So do you think what I'm doing is helping? Yeah, I do. I think what you're doing is bringing attention. Uh, most people are running through life with the blinders on. Most people are stressed out. They don't know how they're going to make their bills this month. They are so focused on survival that they don't have extra consciousness left to focus on issues like this. And for you to put the issues in their face, that's what that's what they need to wake up enough so that the people can take charge of the country again. I, I swear there's, a, there's people out there that are running things that are intentionally making it so hard on us that we don't take charge of our own country anymore so they can continue to profit. But you're out there, you get what you're seeing, and you're, you're like hopping in up to your knees with it and, uh, and showing us. You're revealing what what the companies that are committing the crimes want to have remain hidden. And that's really important. It's important to, I think the people have the right to know what's going on with their environment. And, uh, and I'm really proud of you for the work you're doing. And I wish we had more people like you doing this work. John, the work you're doing is so important. I hope that people watching will open up their wallets and pull out their credit cards and put put down an amount, any amount, a monthly amount, just a monthly stipend, because it only takes a small amount from a lot of people to support you so that the work that you can do can continue to happen. Yeah, I'm concerned. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of money, but if everybody expects someone else to do it, then you're not going to be able to take care of the work that we so desperately need to have you do. So I'm encouraging anybody that's out there to open up your wallet and put, put down an amount of money uh, that, uh, that can go to John every month to support his work.